Hey everyone, my name is Tyson Choptain. I'm Executive Vice President of Broadview Networks. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join us. I'm also uh, joined by Jordan Bissonnet, our Solutions Analyst at Broadview Networks. And today we're going to talk about business process automation. A couple of housekeeping items to get out of the way. Uh, hopefully everyone got their skip the dishes code emailed to them to enjoy some lunch. Uh, while we talk about technology. And if you had any trouble using it, please send an email to solutions at bravinetworks.ca and we'll get that straightened out for you. We are using Microsoft Teams webinar format today. By default, when everyone joined, they were muted and their cameras were turned off. And the reason for that is just to control the amount of communication that's going on while the presentation is taking place. If you want to be able to participate uh, by voice in asking any questions, you can utilize the chat window or raise your hand to let us know you want to have a question asked uh, live, and then we can unmute your microphone. You will need to unmute your microphone on your end as well and then you'll be able to uh, talk live and you certainly can turn your camera on if you'd like to as well. You can also simply use the chat to ask any questions uh, along the way. So hopefully that's all reasonably straightforward. If you have any questions, just you know, by default, use the chat bubble to just type a question in and then we can go from there. So really excited to talk about business process automation today and really you know, this is a core to Broadview Networks and what we do. One of the taglines that we're very proud of that we talk about all the time with customers and potential customers is productivity through technology. And we really want to see productivity being gained by your organizations, by the technology and the applications that you have the ability to use. And we're going to focus on the capabilities of the technologies built in the Microsoft 365 stack of products and how you can use those products and technologies to improve a lot of normal, manual, usually paper-based business processes that you may have in your organization today. We're going to try and help give examples of where you can improve the quality of the information that you're dealing with today, uh, dealing with repetitive tasks and automating functionality within your organization to improve, improve productivity and achieve more efficiency. What's really important to understand about what we're talking about today is these are not large, complex projects. They are not going to take a large amount of cost. They're not going to be massive projects to get underway. Most of these are one to three days of effort of our time to help you configure. Obviously, there's some testing and some deployment time, but those are also very short and usually very little training is involved. They're very easy to adopt. You get a return on investment very quickly from the type of configurations we're talking about. And I'm going to emphasize throughout this that we call this configuration versus deployment. You're not having to load up a coding application and develop an interface and do web app design or phone app design to be able to leverage some of the more advanced uh, functionality we're going to talk about today. This can be done very simply with the tools that are built into the Microsoft 365 stack. And you don't have to do everything at once. You can start by simply moving some data into a SharePoint list and then later on adding on some Power BI reporting and then potentially replacing a Microsoft form or a manual data entry with a Power app that does that for you. So you can expand these solutions and you can get started in a small bit and then grow as it makes sense for your organization over time. So we're going to be using a combination of a number of different tools that exist within Office 365 
part of the Microsoft 365 stack of products. At the core, we're going to be using technologies like Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Form for data input. And once that data is inputted, now it's into the machine. So, you know, we have the gears representing the idea that data flows in. And from that, we can do reporting out of that. We can do application-based usage of that data or use applications as a way to bring the data in. We're doing cloud-based storage for all of this. So you don't have to worry about how it's going to be accessible or available to people. As long as they have an internet connection, they're going to have access to these systems and access to this data. It is secure. It's part of the Microsoft 365 stack. If you want to ensure that deep security, you can use multi-factor authentication to protect this data and the access to it. So there's no risk about putting your corporate information uh, in these types of data formats stored in the cloud because that security is built in as well. So we're going to talk about some examples. Uh, one example is Bothwell Cheese that we did a couple of different projects for them. One is about product tracking and how they uh, manage their product data on the line during production. Another one is uh, simple safety tracking that dramatically improved the process of how they were dealing with tracking that information before. We're going to talk about a partner of ours, LCM Security. They do quarterly reports of their security services to their customers and they were gathering data from a whole bunch of different formats, a whole bunch of different data sets, and they were manually putting it together. And we were able to build an automated process for that. And we'll talk later about how that uh, approved efficiency for them. Uh, Manitoba Hydro International, an inventory and collaboration tracking application. And the key to that one was being able to use it more uh, mobile on, on mobile devices out in the field, whether it be tablets, whether it be phones or PCs, same interface, no matter what type of device you're using, all the information being stored in the cloud, accessible anytime, anywhere. Talk about how we did some job application workflow for a healthcare regulatory agency. Very simple, taking some automated, some emails coming in and automating and e making it easier to deal with uh, job applications. Uh, local Education Resource Center, how they did, uh, made improvements to how they request marketing needs within the organization spread out across multiple resources. And then we'll talk about how a social work organization improved their uh, case at tracking and reporting information. What's really important to understand, all these solutions were under $5,000. Some of these were $1,000 to implement. And a lot of these started as a simple start in a $1,000 or $2,000 price range. And then a little bit more was added on later for another 1,000 or another 1,500 as they wanted to expand the functionality. As we talk about these examples, I'd like you to think about your own organization where you have you know, either manual data collection happening on paper or in Excel spreadsheets that is then you know shared with other people or has some sort of an approval process it has to go through and think about how the examples we give today might be able to improve how you are doing things in your organization and save people time while giving you better access to data and likely better reporting than what you would be doing with some of the tools and technologies you might be using today. So Bothwell Cheese, they've been a good customer of ours for a long time, a long-standing relationship. And uh, early on when we started working with them in their Office 365 environment and getting their email into the cloud, not long after that, there was conversations about how we could help them improve what they're doing for some data tracking. So they had a manual document that was filled out by people by pen and paper every time there was a safety incident. So the first issue that I'm going to have with that as an IT person is now I've got the issue that I've got to interpret someone's uh, reading, uh, writing and, and read that what they've written onto a paper form that was then being inputted manually by someone into an Excel spreadsheet. So now we have two potential ways of errors in data. We could incorrectly read what someone wrote on the form, or we could simply incorrectly put that information into Excel uh, when we're transposing that data. So there was data error issues. 
And then once that data was in Excel, there wasn't a full capability to report on that data. So the person that was in charge of the safety tracking on a regular basis created an Excel chart and then emailed that out to everyone. And people would really didn't know anything new about what the status of their safety incidents were until that person generated that data and sent that report back out again. So that's been replaced with a, a lot of automated process and proper forms. So we now have a form that gets filled out online. There's no risk of people putting the wrong type of data into the wrong type of fields. There's no risk of data being damaged or incorrect during transposing from a paper form into a digital format. It's no longer in an Excel spreadsheet. It's now in a SharePoint list. So it's stored in the cloud. It's readily available from anywhere, anytime. It's automatically backed up by the cloud backup service that they have. So we've made the data better, higher quality, and we've increased the integrity of that data and the ability to hold that data. We also now get audit as to every time the data is changed and new data is added in, which didn't exist in the Excel spreadsheet format. We then built Power BI reporting so that any of the people, the managers that need to access the report can go look at that Power BI report whenever they want. And then there was a notification process built in so that whenever there's a safety incident entered, the necessary managers and people get notified right away. So to give an idea of what this looks like, Jordan, can you take us through these screenshots a little bit, please? Yeah, sure. So here on this first first screenshot here, you would see an example of just a basic um, SharePoint list that then becomes your database showing you um, every single safety um, incident there. So it kind of functions like an Excel spreadsheet, but it has uh, a lot more functionality to that. So on the next photo, this would be the actual form, which is a power app, and this is what's actually feeding the data inside of that list. So by filling out this form, it's now going to uh, create that uh, that 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 list item. And that's what will um, trigger the workflow to notify the right people involved. And uh, and then it will um, also here on this last photo uh, and now allows you to look at this data in different ways. You can look at it grouped by, let's say, managers, departments, etc. But you can also view this data uh, inside of a calendar view. So now, now at the monthly, uh, their monthly or yearly safety review meetings, it becomes very, very, uh, very simple. You just go back and look at a month and you could see every single, uh, safety incident that's happened in a month and you click on it and it opens the form versus showing up to a meeting with a big pile of, you know, papers and going through all your safety incidents that you've had in that year. And then, uh, using a tool like Power BI, you can have real-time reports connecting to that SharePoint list. So now uh, no one needs to manually make these monthly reports. They're just always up to date for whenever management needs to look at them. And it becomes very simple to just report on this stuff and you're not wasting time generating these manual reports monthly. Yeah, and this Power BI report, like many Power BI reports, can be drill down based. So you click on ARM and it can give you the detailed incidents that affected ARM. Or in the top left hand corner here, where you see the different months, you could click on the incidents or the high severity incidents and it would bring up that specific incident. And so it's interactive data. So it's a, a real time report viewable from a website, viewable again from anywhere. You can view it on your phone if you want to, and then drill down into the data that goes with it. And then this would be an example of uh, just some of the notifications that could be sent out uh, when a new safety incident is is uh, made into the system and this could be specified it could go to that person's manager it could go to a department lead it could go to the whole management group depending on on what uh the unique process you might have within your own kind of um, organization and and kind of what tyson mentioned as well is this is for safety uh this this exact same format could be used for different things like you know quality like a quality issue you're tracking or, or maybe a repair and maintenance forms you're manually filling out or whenever paper forms are being filled out, it can all be replaced with this kind of solution so that it can all be automated. 
Yeah, and even people are doing this in Excel or, you know, word based documents today, those still require some collation of that data by replacing that with a power app. You remove that data collation process and you remove the complexity of having multiple spreadsheets out there, multiple sets of the data, multiple versions of the right form people should be filling out and you simplify that process of managing it as well. Another example with Bothwell Cheese was managing the data that they need to have available to the people on the production line as they're doing different parts of the production of actually packaging up the cheese. So when they make the cheese, that's one process. When they package up the cheese, cheese is made in large blocks and then it's processed into the appropriate size, cut into small box, really small blocks, slices, shredded, whatever might need to happen with it. And there is a bunch of standard operating procedures and documents and important information that's needed. Originally, they actually had tablets that people were trying to wear on the production line and use while they were trying to look up all this data. And it was stored in at first on the file server, so people had to know to go where on the file server to find it through remote desktop off of a tablet hanging off their neck. Not the most efficient way to work on the production line. We then moved the data files to SharePoint and that improved it a little bit, but it still wasn't the simplest and easiest interface for everyone to use. So what happened here was we basically built a better display solution for the same data they already had. We didn't change the data at all. They had all the documents. They had all the information. We moved the data, the Excel spreadsheets, the PDFs, the relevant information into SharePoint. We put it into SharePoint tagged and categorized the correct way and then built a very simple interface for people to be able to uh, access this information. And they're so happy with the way that it was done at Bothwell. They have a sister company in BC and we're implementing that for their sister company in BC. So yeah, Jordan, if you want to take us through the interface that was built. Yeah, so here would be uh, an example of one of the um, packaging areas. So when you're about to work on a specific SKU, you would click on uh, one of the buttons that would then open up a, a kind of a dedicated SharePoint page that will give you all of the information that you need to know about that SKU. So the whole kind of recipe uh the um the um um in here you'll see like the uh, associated standard operating procedures quality documents responsibilities everything linked to that specific SKU you're about to work on is all on one page uh, and i think if you move ahead one photo there's uh and then um there's also the, the the actual layout of of where specific employees should should be so it all becomes very um very simple once you click on that specific skew everything you need to know about what you're about to work on is just in one place so you're not stuck going to look for these documents in multiple different areas it's all just on one one page that can be accessed from from a laptop, a tablet, et cetera. Yeah, so much simpler user interface. When you think about having this on a tablet in front of you, you simply tap on the product that you want to work on. You tap on that product, up pops the necessary screen with the information of what you're going to do, how long it should take, what the process is, and then into the details of what equipment's going to be used, how you're, which method you're going to use that equipment in, and then all the detailed operating procedures that go with using each of those pieces of equipment. So really simplifies the training process and onboarding new staff as well. And as Jordan mentioned, having that visual layout of where everyone needs to be based on what they're doing is very helpful as well. They're actually considering or we're considering, we may go to this stand of actually having it where you could click on the person and the representative documents for specifically at that station, at that role, the documents specific to that role, that could be done as well. So LCM Security is a security partner of ours. They work with a number of our customers on uh, ongoing managed security services, augmenting the managed security services that Broadview delivers uh, natively as well. And uh, one of the things they do, as I mentioned earlier, is they build a quarterly report for their customers uh, 
amalgamating data from a number of different systems. The data that comes out of the firewalls, the data that comes out of the security monitoring software solutions, the uh, ticket data that comes out of any of the security incidents that have to be reviewed by their security staff. All of that gets brought together in a single report um, and it's it's a very large and complicated report to put together. It's actually very simple at the end when they present it to the customer, but there's a lot of data that has to go into that. And as you can see here, they originally had a 500 page reference document explaining how to properly build the report out of all the different data sets that they had that had to go into it. And so again, a large amount of error is possible when you have humans taking data from different pieces of information or different pardon me, data sets and bringing them together in one location. So uh, automation was done by setting it up so that they could drag the source files and drop them into the correct location. Then the data is taken out of those source files and brought into a combined document, um, essentially building the document for them. So what used to take five uh, hours on average to build one of these reports. I uh, dropped it down to 15 minutes and now these are documents that can be provided uh, to the customers with live report access if they want that and uh, a lot of time is spent on higher value work so that these people aren't spending their time putting the document together anymore. They're spending the time reviewing it with the customers. So uh, Jordan, I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, one thing I'll kind of just add to that is um, what this kind of demonstrates is uh, things that you can do with a tool like Power BI, where um, ideally, whenever uh, the you know preferred solution would be to have a direct connection to whatever data source you want to report on, but in certain scenarios, like if we're dealing with certain CRMs, financial uh, software, or in this case, uh, firewalls, etc. Uh, since they can't be directly connected to most of those tools or software does have the ability to to do a CSV export or an Excel export and sometimes that could even be automated so really as long as these different uh, tools that you're using has the ability to do uh, any type of CSV or um, Excel export from that uh, Power BI could start mining all that data combining that data and then building uh, building reports. So there's there's very rarely a scenario where you can't use a tool like Power BI to improve your reporting because it can, even if it can't directly connect to a specific tool you're using, that tool most likely has the ability to um, produce some sort of export that could then be processed by a tool like Power BI. And then it just becomes a matter of dragging and dropping a file into a folder and that's and that's it. So that's that's essentially what their process was switched from instead of actually creating reports it's just dragging and dropping the right exports into the right folder and then and then pressing pressing a refresh button and then that's it so excellent uh, Manitoba Hydro International uh, obviously they have a lot of equipment one of the things that not necessarily everyone knows uh, is that Manitoba Hydro International has a high voltage test lab where they do a lot of voltage testing and scenario based solutions to understand how they need to build power distribution, power plants, all of that type of overall high voltage power management. And that's not just done for Manitoba Hydro. It's a service that Manitoba Hydro International actually sells all over the world. And they have people coming in from all over the world um, utilizing that lab. And so in that lab, there's a lar large number of pieces of equipment. Those pieces of equipment need to be tracked for who's using them, but they also be, have to be calibrated and certified before they can be used the next time to make sure the results they're giving is accurate. And uh, they don't just do this in their physical building. Some of this is done outside the building and needs the ability to be done mobile as well. So a solution was built where a uh, power app was built, 
allowing people to select the necessary equipment, look at the calibration history or update the calibration information, say when a piece of equipment has been returned, when it's been calibrated, and then uh, the necessary reporting to be able to understand the state of all the equipment and now build reports on how often the equipment is being used, how often it has to be calibrated, all of the work that has to go into properly using it. So again, this looks like a web app in the sense that it runs on your mobile phone, but it's not custom app development. It's simply going into Power Apps, grabbing the fields out of a SharePoint list that was built and dragging them into the appropriate location on the screen and setting up how you want the screen to look and having the necessary information available. And Jordan, you could probably add more details to this since you actually built it. Yeah, and, and I mean, this one's pretty straightforward as well, where 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 essentially you would have a a list of of all your you know pieces of equipment, tools, vehicles, whatever it might be, and just by searching that, it really uh, lets you open up that specific item. You can you can make um you know you can make a change to the item right there. You can view the calibration history, any related manuals. So it gives you a way to have access to all that stuff just directly from your phone or any type of browser or a or a um um or a tablet. And then once again, uh things can be expanded on whereas you could start adding in notifications, reminders. So if if an item is about to expire it it can send a notification to whoever's in charge of that item, letting them know, you know, the calibration's expiring in 30 days. So make sure you make sure you renew it. So you can start adding in extra pieces to something like this. And um, like what Tyson mentioned, it doesn't involve any like custom development. It's all just using uh, the Power Apps app, and then whoever has been shared this app just needs to install Microsoft Power Apps on their phone, just needs to add that that app, and then they'll just be able to see whichever apps have been shared to them. So there's no uh, like specific configuration you have to do on people using this app. It's just available to them. And because this is leveraging Office 365 on the back end, the users are authenticating with their Office 365 user ID. So the system already knows who's the one that's filling in the form. And so you get audit tracking built into the functionality because you're forcing people to authenticate to be able to access these systems and put data into it. And you're using an authentication system that's not another set of passwords or information that people need to remember. It's the same authentication they're using to get their email or any other Office 365 services. So it's just building on the security that's already built into Office 365. Uh, another example is in uh, HR, a smaller organization that doesn't have a dedicated HR application and has a very simplified HR process. They use Indeed for their job applications and they had Indeed set up going to careers at or, you know, probably careers at. I don't remember what the exact email was that was going into a shared mailbox and three or four different people had access to that mailbox. But now a new item comes into that mailbox and user A opens it and then do they know if user B has looked at it or user C? Does anyone know who's processed it or decided if this is someone that, you know, an, uh, this application and the person that, that filled out that application is someone that should be considered for the position or not considered for the position? Do I need someone else to review it? I have no process to know if, who and what's been reviewed and it just became kind of a, a messy process. So by automating the process of having the email come in directly to a SharePoint site. A notification can be sent when a new email has come in to the appropriate person or persons. Someone goes in and reviews it. It documents the fact that someone's gone in and reviewed it. Now they can begin a workflow process where they can either just manually tell someone else to go and look at it, or we can have a form where they fill out the form and pass it on to the next person for review with their comments. And there's a good structure for understanding what state the application is in based on how the data is stored. So uh, Jordan, go ahead and just explain that structure a little bit. Yeah, so what what was uh, what was happening here is whenever a new um, email, whether it was a resume or a cover letter was being sent 
from Indeed to that um, s specific mailbox, a a a workflow was grabbing that attachment and making a folder for that job automatically, and then um, entering in every single resume into that folder, which was inside of a team, which was uh, so that they could go view the um, things real time as they would come in. So now no one's wasting time manually uh, saving these resumes into a SharePoint site. That whole thing was being automated. And then from there, uh, they were, I think if you advance one uh, uh, to the next photo, uh, from there, it was just entering in the resumes inside of that folder. And then they were dragging and dropping them into their own folders they made to kind of decide you know, yes or no, who are we going to follow up with? Uh, and these are the types of things where someone might be wasting a lot of time every day, constantly monitoring a mailbox for when either a new like customer issue has come in or or if you're waiting for lab lab results or whatever it might be, whenever someone is is needing to manually grab um, attachments, whether it's invoices, et cetera, and then save them in specific sites, uh, that that process can most likely be improved and um, automated to have those to have those attachments automatically saved to the right place so that someone's not having to keep that mailbox clean themselves. Excellent. Um, another example of taking a process that involves multiple people getting something completed, making sure everyone knows what's involved, everyone understands what has to be done, and making sure there's a way to track if everyone's done their piece without having a system in place already to do it. So uh, Local Education Resource Centre has uh, multiple departments that need to provide data into marketing when marketing material is required. It's not just a marketing responsibility. Other people in other departments provide the data in when the marketing request is made. And so before it was emails that went around the office. So <clears throat> user A needed new marketing content put together. They would blast an email out to 10 different people and it, they didn't know necessarily which person was doing which job. Hard to track that through an email chain of who's doing what and when they have it done. So a Microsoft form was created that puts together who needs to do what and what needs to be done and then creates tasks in Microsoft Planner so that everyone can see who needs to do what and then can set reminders for different staff and track when they're behind on any of the components they need to do. And the person who made the request can just go to one screen and see where everything is at. So uh, Jordan, you want to take us through the form that was created? Sure. Yeah. So this is a uh, an example of using um, using Microsoft Forms to just get the um, internal staff to fill out this form for a when they're trying to make a um, request. And one of the 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 main advantages of this versus an email is whenever you're back and forth um, requesting work via via like an email, you're often missing about half of the data, and a lot of time is. Um, wasted in that back and forth of of them just needing to ask all the right questions where now you're 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 you know forcing them to fill out the right things if they want if they want work done so it kind of cleans up that that whole thing and then from there it um once the the form is submitted it will make a task inside of planner for the right uh Based on the type of request, uh, it'll create the right type of task in the right area, uh, whether it's in this in in uh, this scenario, whether it was like graphic design or printing or who was in charge of it. And then the whole thing can be tracked and monitored. And then once again, notifications when it's done, it could send uh, uh, send a notification to the person that filled it out, letting them know that their task has been completed. But it just becomes uh, a lot um easier to view all of this and then once again uh this this can be expanded upon um if 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 ever in the future they want to start reporting on this a tool like power bi can start generating reports on you know how many of these are getting per month per year compared to last year which uh, departments get the most so it 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 uh okay. it allows for things to 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 expand over time 
Yeah, and for those who haven't used Microsoft Planner, basically we have each different task or project that's been asked for. So uh, editing piece for this, a design piece for something else, a design piece for something else, what all the different tasks that need to be done are, who they're assigned to by their Office 365 username. And then depending on how that assignment is made in that form, uh, it will create reminders and tasks for those individual people to follow up. And if they choose to use the task list in Microsoft um, Excel or Microsoft Outlook, for example, to mark the task complete, it'll mark that here. They can upload the necessary files. So there's one central source of location for everyone to go and see what the status of that design project is, where it's at and what needs to be done and who is behind and hasn't done their piece and follow up with them directly. But one place to go and look and see what the status is. This is an example of uh, probably the, the closest to, you know, application development that you might see where we look at an existing access database, which is almost a form of application development. Someone took Microsoft Access, created a custom Microsoft Access database. It's being used by multiple people throughout the organization in a lo local social work organization um, to track information about uh, what needs to be done with their clientele. The problem with it being in Microsoft Access, uh, the database is stored on a local server, so you have to be on site to that server to access that database. You have to be doing it from a Microsoft uh, Windows or a Mac computer that has Microsoft Access installed on it, um, and that's the only way you could update the information. There was not a lot of detailed reporting built in, and so a lot of challenges to sort of take this business function and the application behind it to the next level. So uh, the application was moved from Microsoft Access to Power Apps. The database was moved into a SharePoint list. Uh, workflows were implemented to provide reminders for functions. Reporting was developed to give detailed stats and trends. And now it's available to be used mobile from just about anywhere, from just about any kind of device, as long as you have internet connectivity. And uh, Jordan, if you want to go ahead and explain a little bit more about what was built. Yeah, so uh, once again, this is leveraging um, SharePoint lists as as uh, the database uh, for all the records. And once uh, once a record is filled out, it then um, enters it uh, enters it into the system. And from there, um, a tool like Power BI is uh, looking at that and generating uh, real time reports. Uh, and then as well with the reminders reminding like once a once a once a case is closed uh they always needed to do a one month follow up so now there's um instead of that being kind of a manual thing and now uh it'll tell when you've closed the case and then in 30 days it'll remind you to do a follow up and then and then it'll get you to go enter that into this form so there's a lot of um extra automation possibilities and then as far as just reporting as well so once again this is just leveraging sharepoint lists uh and then power bi uh looking at those lists to make these real-time reports yeah as the other power bi reports these reports are able to be drilled down you could give more detailed reports to specific users you could give simpler over reviews overview reports to other users. The nice thing about Power BI is you can divide, use the same data set, create different report views for different groups of users with different sets of information, depending on what they need to see and how they need to see it. And then a lot of it, again, can be drilled into. So you click on a specific bar, for example, the number of admissions in a specific month, and then it highlights the data down to that specific drill down. So very dynamic reporting, uh, real-time reporting, because you're not having to wait for the data to be imported or the data to be, uh, you know, someone to come back from working out in the field to fill it into the computer and then get into the access database and then generate a report and then email that report to everyone. Now someone out in the field can update data. As soon as they update that data, the reporting front end that other people are viewing from, that data is in real time, so it's updated instantly. So those are just some examples and the stories and the reasons behind why customers had a need to improve their business process. In, in all of these cases, doesn't matter which one it was, 
they've gained advantage in both the time people are spending on the work that they're doing to get their work done. And, and that's where, you know, nobody's wants the majority of these people, their job isn't to fill in reports. You may have some people that is their job. This case, it's people that are doing something else and filling in a report or getting some data into a system is a part of their job or accessing the, some data is a part of the rest of their job. This is helping making that more efficient and making those people more productive by leveraging newer technologies that are not redesigning everything in the organization or rewriting new applications from scratch or changing how everything gets done, simply taking what they have modifying it slightly, automating it, and bringing it into these cloud technologies and leveraging those technologies. So the, the best and easiest next step is a call with Jordan um, and to talk about you know, what type of scenarios might make sense for your organization. Workflow automation could be the right uh, idea, could be reporting on existing data that you have leveraging Power BI, could be creating some dashboards that are visible to everyone all the time for you know KPI and uh, tracking information, could be just automating some manual data collection or improving that manual data collection process. If SharePoint is going to be a significant part of what you're doing, we have SharePoint workshops we can do that can orient and introduce you to what can be done with this SharePoint, within SharePoint. And then we also have our Broadview Academy, uh, our sister company that does training, and there we can help with SharePoint training. So as you want to roll SharePoint out to your organization to provide for the ability to do some of the uh, examples we gave today or expand on them, uh, that's a possibility that we can provide as well to go with these solutions when they're uh, developed and deployed to your organization. So uh, we have time for questions, if there's any questions or if anyone wants to understand uh, how this can operate. It looks like we have one question already. Uh, is there any triggers for Microsoft Teams phone? Yes, there are. So uh, you can definitely do some power automate based triggering from phone calls from uh, Microsoft Teams. We actually run Microsoft Teams ourselves as our phone system, and we are doing some triggering um, based on what's happening in Microsoft Teams uh, using power automate today. So that's something that we both know you can do and have some experience doing as well. Uh, will the recording be shared? Love to share the presentation with some colleagues. I will let the uh, marketing team determine. I don't understand exactly which ones of these are shared or aren't shared, but uh, Sarah, someone can definitely follow that up with you. Oh, and uh, yeah, we it's we're being told it will be shared. So, um, and uh, I'll let them figure out how that gets shared to you. And you can ask specific technology questions about how these different technologies work to provide this functionality. You can also ask you know, other scenarios that might fit for your organization. Please don't uh, hesitate to take advantage of our time to ask any questions and or provide any feedback if there's something different you'd like to see you know, along this line in future. Thank you for the feedback. We really appreciate that. I guess the one thing that I will add as well is um, other than uh, the Power BI reporting, um, um, everything you saw comes with just the basic Microsoft Microsoft package of like whether it's a business basic, business standard, business premium. Uh, there's no additional costs for um, everything that you just saw today. It comes with the with the basic Microsoft licensing package other than Power BI, but uh, so it's not um, there's there's not a lot of extra costs where that are you know on top of that for every time it's running or to to for like each Power app it's all just part of the Microsoft licensing so it becomes very um, cost effective as well. Oh, we had a couple of questions come in while you were. Uh... Uh, explaining that Jordan and um, I just want to answer those. So the first question is a little more technical, but uh, short answer, Gareth, is yes. 
Uh, there are a number of different ways that we can link external systems or forms or data into SharePoint and then post back to something else. So with Power Automate, um, there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, so and then depending on the API capabilities of the other uh, system that's holding data uh, would define exactly what can or can't be done. But we have taken data from SharePoint and pushed it into other applications with application APIs. We have taken data from other applications and pushed it into SharePoint, uh, depending on how that other application can push data out. And if there isn't already some way to do that, if that is a cloud-based system, there's a number of third-party linking tools out there that we can use that can connect one cloud database, um, say, uh, um, good example would be Salesforce, to another cloud database like SharePoint. There's a number of, of connectivity tools out there that could be used to help with that potentially as well. But that's definitely something that would be good to reach out to uh, one of our account management team and they could get you connected with Jordan to discuss that in more depth. Uh, no, I don't believe Microsoft Planner can be purchased standalone. I think it only comes inside of the um, different Microsoft Office suites. Um, so if you're not using Microsoft Office today um, and you want to take advantage of a technology like Planner, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to double check because Microsoft does often change these things um, that you can't just buy Microsoft Planner by itself. Jordan, do you recall? Uh, no, I'm actually double checking as well, and it looks like you would need uh, at least a, I think it starts at Business Basic. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that uh, that that yeah, you'd have to be in business basic to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, next question is, do all parties involved need to have Office 365? So everybody that you want to be able to input data or view data would need to be part of Office 365. Now, if you wanted to use this for IT support tickets, people could be sending emails into a support address and that could create a ticket in a SharePoint system, for example, if you want. So those people that are sending in the emails don't have to have Office 365, but if they want information back or if they wanna be able to view anything in Power BI or in a SharePoint site that's created, they would have to have um, Office 365 licenses. So we could probably discuss that in more detail, how that could be done. But uh, yeah, so the answer is maybe. Kind of depends on how you want to utilize it and what functionality you want the people that are submitting those IT support tickets to have. But certainly once that data is in SharePoint, and if you only need the IT staff to work with that data to complete those tickets and get that done and then send emails back to the users, then no, those users that are sending the original request in and just receiving a status update, they don't need Office 365 for that. The question would be where your email is today, and there could be some challenges there if you're not using Office 365 for your email, it's a little more difficult to get that whole process started, but that's something we could discuss as well. Uh, any other questions or comments? Anything else anyone wants to know about or has any uh, any questions about? Hopefully these examples that we gave today, while they may not directly apply to your organization, they might resonate with something else that you're doing in your organization and you can see how they could potentially fit into what you are doing and uh, potentially something could be put together for you that accomplishes similar goals. All right, well then if no one has any other questions, I think we'll probably uh, uh, let everyone get back to their day and uh, thank you very much for your time. We really do appreciate people taking time out of their day to uh, to enjoy these presentations. So thanks very much. And yeah, feel free to give any feedback either directly in here or follow up with uh, 
uh, an email to, to uh, solutions at broadbnetworks.ca at, at any time.